Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a password security icon in Adobe Illustrator. So I've started by creating a new document 900 pixels wide and 900 pixels high. And first of all, I'm going to select the rectangle tool, left click and drag to draw a four sided shape. And just give this a color from the swatches panel. I'm going to double click on a shade of gray here and just tick the global box and click OK. Next we're going to select the ellipse tool, left click and hold shift to draw a circle and then using the direct selection tool just click anywhere on the artboard to deselect this shape and then just select that bottom anchor point. Hit delete or backspace to remove and then just swap the fill and the stroke. So the shape now has no fill and it has a grey stroke. Then from the stroke panel, you can increase the stroke weight as you like. So let's go for 30. And you can hold shift and scale this up proportionally here. And we can also lengthen these sides on the padlock or the top part of the padlock icon. So just select the pen tool, go to select, deselect, and then left click on the left side, hold shift and left click again. You'll see it wants to continue this line. Just go to select and deselect and it will stop that. Now before you do the right one, you're going to want to turn on your smart guides. So go to view and down to smart guides. Just make sure that's selected. And you'll see why now. If we left click on the right one and we go down, you'll see those smart guides very nicely line everything up for us. And again, it wants to continue that line, but we just need to go to select and deselect. In fact, this shortcut here is definitely one worth learning. So we've created the top part of the padlock and now we can bring this down and you'll see again, it nicely lines that up to the center. Now, if you're using an older version of Illustrator, so CS6 or earlier, with this shape selected, you're going to want to go to effect, stylize and round corners select preview, adjust the radius and click OK. And then from the appearance panel on the right, you can either select round corners and edit this further, or you can delete the effect altogether. If you're using Illustrator CC or newer, with the shape selected, you'll see these little circles just inside from the edges. Just left click and drag to adjust the radius. So what I'm going to do now is select this top part and just adjust the weight here so we'll bring this up to 40 and you can adjust the width of the rectangle by holding alt and dragging from the sides and it will scale that width wise towards the center so I'm happy with that all looking great let's just move this down and next I'm going to select the ellipse tool left click and hold shift to draw a circle and just give this circle a white fill and I'm then going to position that centrally and just move it down. So this is going to be where the key would go in and we're only going to see this top part as you'll see in a moment. So next we're going to select the rectangle tool and we're just going to draw a four sided shape. Now the color of this rectangle is going to match the color of your background. So in this case it's going to be white and I'm just going to drag this up so it covers half of that circle and I could just bring this in again from the sides. So we've created the top part of the padlock. That's all looking great. Let's just move this up here out the way. Next, we're going to create the password part of the icon. So again, let's select the rectangle tool, left click and drag to create a four sided shape. Remove the fill and select the stroke and then give this a stroke color. I'm going to use the same gray global swatch that I've created already. And in the stroke panel, I'm going to type 40 as the stroke weight, just so we're consistent with the padlock icon above. And then you can round off the corners however you like. It's probably best to round off the corners in the same way that you did in the steps previously. So we've rounded off the corners here. And in the stroke panel, you can align the stroke to either the center, the inside or the outside. And you'll see you get varying results. So let's align this to the outside to continue that nice consistent curve, both on the inside and the outside of the stroke. Now to create the asterisks, you can select the type tool 
and you can type the asterisk symbol like so and choose a font. Alternatively, you can select the line tool, just left click and drag holding shift to create a perfectly straight line. Again, we'll give this the same color and adjust the weight of this. So let's go for, let's go for 20. And with that line selected, go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, and just hold shift and rotate from the corner. And then again, select both these shapes by dragging over them and go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, and rotate from the corner holding shift. And this time we're going to stop at 45 degrees. It will snap nicely in place. And there's an asterisk. In fact, I'm just going to adjust that. So I'm going to go and undo the last few steps. That's Commander Control Z. And I'm just going to use the direct selection tool to just lengthen this line a bit. So let's do that again. Edit, copy, edit, paste in place. Hold shift and rotate. Drag over these. Go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place. Hold shift and rotate 45 degrees. There we go. That's a little bit more like an asterisk. And I can select that and go to object group. And we'll move this into position down here. And then I'm just going to left click and drag holding alt and shift to create a copy. And I can repeat that last action by pressing command or control D. And I'm just going to lengthen the box a little bit because what we're going to do is double click on one of these to go inside and we can move these around individually if we like. You'll see from the top left that we are now inside this group. So I'm going to select the horizontal line and go to edit copy. So that's now copy to the clipboard. We can come out of this group by clicking the back arrow. So we're exiting isolation mode. And I'm going to zoom in and go edit paste in place and just move this down so that it lines up with the bottom and then either use the mouse or the arrow keys just to shift that out to the right. So one last thing we can do is drag over everything and hold shift and left click on the rounded rectangle to deselect it. So it's just left us with these objects selected in the middle and from the alignment options at the top, we can select horizontal distribute center. If you're on a smaller display and your alignment options aren't at the top, they will be here on the right hand side, or you can go to window and down to align and they will appear. So let's just click on this horizontal distribute center and you'll see it adjust the spacing. So each of these objects is now spaced equally apart. And all of those are central within the rounded rectangle so that is all looking good. So we can drag over this, move this up here, make sure that it's central to the padlock part of our icon and just position it in place. So there we go, we've created our icon, it's looking great. What we need to do though, is if we go into outline mode, that's command or control Y, we've got lots and lots of different strokes, lots of different shapes, and we're going to need to tidy this up. Because if I scale this down, you'll see that all those strokes still remain editable and it doesn't adjust the stroke weight. What you can do is go to the transform panel and select the drop down from the top right and select scale strokes and effects. As you hold shift and scale this down, it will scale those strokes with the shape. So that's one thing that's quite handy. However, what we're going to do is we're going to finish this icon off a little bit more. So let's just keep an editable version over here and just hold Alt and Shift and drag this version back onto the artboard. This is the version that we're going to be working on. And we're going to select each of these shapes in turn and just expand them where necessary. So we've got the top part of the padlock. This is still an editable stroke. So if we go to Object down to Expand, leave Fill and Stroke selected and click OK, you'll see that it goes from being an editable stroke to a shape in Illustrator, so we can't easily edit the width anymore from the stroke panel. And the shape now has a fill. Now if we select the rounded rectangle here, 
If you rounded off your rectangle by going to Effect, Stylize and Round Corners, what you'll need to do is with this shape selected, go to Object and Expand and repeat the steps that we did a moment ago. However, if you rounded off the corners by dragging these little anchor points here, what you'll need to do is go to the Pathfinder panel and just select Unite with that shape alone selected. And you'll see that those little anchor points disappear and this shape will now not adjust itself as you scale it up or down. Sometimes if you leave those anchor points unchecked, it can cause a bit of confusion when merging shapes together. So now we can just drag over both of these two parts of the padlock and in the Pathfinder panel, select Unite. And then we have the circle here. What we can do is left click on that, hold Shift and select the gray part of the padlock. And in the Pathfinder panel, select minus front. If I just add a background color behind everything, so let's pick a bright red. So you can see we've still got this big white box. So let's get rid of that by selecting the white box, holding shift and selecting the gray padlock. And in the Pathfinder panel, select minus front. And you'll see it knocks that out. And we can get rid of this red background now. So the top part of our padlock is all now one shape. So that's all looking good. Next, let's select the rounded rectangle. And again, depending on how you round it off your rectangle, you're going to want to go to object and expand or expand appearance or use the pathfinder panel. Now, because this shape has a stroke and not a fill, like in the last step, we're going to want to go to object and expand appearance for this one. It's very different whether you're using a fill or a stroke that you need to expand. So that seems to have done the job there. Let's just check by scaling this up, holding shift and scaling it down. Okay, so that stays proportional. That's all good. So next, let's hold shift and select all of these asterisks and the line and go to object, expand, leave fill and stroke selected and click OK. So they all look good. Let's drag over those. And again, in the Pathfinder panel, select Unite. And you can see what this is doing here. All these different shapes, just nice and tidily combined into one. And we can drag over all of these icons in the bottom part, and we can go to Object and Group. So now as we move this around, they all move around together as one. And we can select both parts of our icon by dragging over and then from the alignment options select horizontal align center and we can then drag that into the center of the artboard move this up holding shift and then with everything selected go to object group and drag from one of the four corners holding alt and shift and it will scale down towards the center and we can then select this icon at the top and instead of align to selection, change that to align to artboard. And we can align this horizontally and vertically in the center of the artboard. Now, one last thing we're going to do is just add some color. So with the direct selection tool, we can just select individual parts of this group without needing to go inside in isolation mode. So let's just select a color here. Make sure that you have the fill selected and not the stroke. And let's go and pick a color for this. And we just adjust this. Make sure preview is also selected just so you can see that your color as you adjust the sliders. And I'm going to double click that swatch. Just make it a global swatch as well. And if you like, you can also add a background. So with the rectangle tool, I'm just going to create a shape that is equal to the width and height of the artboard and go to object, arrange, center back. And then from the swatches panel, just pick a color. And I can actually then go to object, lock selection, and it will lock that background layer in case I accidentally move it by mistake. And you can unlock that by going to object, unlock all. 
and the background is then editable. And there we go, that's how to create a password security icon in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.